1992. This public body is authorized to meet electronically. Um, in accordance with Act 92, there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. <laughs> However, in accordance with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, I confirm that we are providing access to the meeting um, using the Zoom platform and um, all members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform and the public has access to listen in and if desired participate in this meeting um, and you can find your access to this zoom platform on the town website and post it in town at three places at least and the people that are on a requested email list get it directly to them so here we are. Um, before we start, does anyone have any additions to the posted agenda? Um, I do. <laughs> I'd like to um, um, talk about the exciting prospect that they're threatening to repave Route 100 between Stockbridge and Rochester next year. So, um, wow. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah. How many Let's years get them to go to the Hancock Town line. Uh, no, no, not quite to the Hancock Town no, line, but no uh, luck there. No. How, many, how many years has this been? Um, been? A lot, a lot. Okay. It's been a while. Um, so let's see. Everyone is um, pretty obvious who we have here. Of course, any non-unanimous votes have to be by roll call, but um, for the most part, we um, haven't had to deal with that. So we'll. Um, move forward with the minutes from the last meeting and they look good to me except for one addition i think julie we should um, um put on there that the we exited executive session at seven o'clock with no action taken okay because you mentioned that we went into it but we have to come back out of it yeah um so if anyone else have any adjustments to that if not i'd um, move to approve the minutes i second it and all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Get those on. Get those minutes. Um, <clears throat> that. So, um, well, let's um, talk about that. The um, the prospect of them paving. They reached out to ask us. Um, for any information about infrastructure that is under Route 100, which would be water lines and sewer lines, what have you. Joan, have you, have you seen this yet? Uh, I did. Um, I'm going to be in the office, I think, on Wednesday. I want to pull out that uh, infrastructure, that um, water, and what was it? Uh, the, something about uh, the water infrastructure mapping that was done for the town in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, because that would be a good document at least to send to them and then uh, maybe remind ourselves of what where all the drainage issues are. Well, that's what I'm gonna bring up. I know they wanna know where our water lines are and sewer lines, but I think we really need to make a, a big stink about the storm drain, which is their yes. storm drain. Cause when it was caving in on the north end of town a few years ago, they finally came and fixed it, but they refused to do any improvement on the system as a whole they only repaired what was broken and yeah. i think we really need to have them add another inlet to that storm drain somewhere in front of the skip mart or the bakery where it oh, yeah, up yeah. so badly and that'd be the time to do it instead mm -hmm. of um you know paving over something that needs to get torn up yet again right so that, there are probably that's... other places where we might uh suggest either they upsize or add new drains um, because we probably don't have enough in some of those places. Don't yeah. you think? That right off the top of my top of my head is the is the one of the worst spots in town. Now, yeah. um, I know that the um, the proposal for the larger of the stormwater projects that um, was researched and designed for us is the one that would handle that line that would end up into a, a treatment situation underneath the new park mm -hmm. and even though we wouldn't necessarily be triggering that whole project i don't see why we couldn't make sure that the 
the system that would eventually feed that project would be in place and updated, ready to go with any. Yeah, so, um, yeah. yeah. That Maybe and, we can and, even have a quick consult with um, uh, the watershed consulting associates who did the stormwater right. master plan for us and see if they had any suggestions that we can you know, sort of add to that and pass along to the state. Yeah. And then um, that, that, that leads into, and which is a big part of making sure that the stormwater is directed appropriately into those catch basins is um, the sidewalk and curb situation in town. Right. So I guess right. we um, knock on wood, we don't have a Bethel Mountain Road project. We don't have a failing sewer site project. Maybe mm -hmm. this is the um, time to um, revisit that that topic and, and make sure that we can optimize what any ener whatever energy the state is putting into the, the working on the road. Yeah, so yeah. More people want it in, yeah. Um, um, am I correct in that um, you said they were planning to do this, so they say, next summer? There was no commitment there. There was no date set on it. Basically. Okay, with yeah. no date set, okay. Yeah. Hello, no, no. Catherine and, and Jeff. I'm sorry I let you in a little late there. Um, we were just um, talking about the um, the um, state <laughs> threatening us with repaving Route 100 next year and all the, the um, other little things, ducks, we'd like to get in a row around that, such as the uh, stormwater runoff and, and maybe improving some of the um, sidewalk and curb. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. So. Um, Paving 100, what a concept. Yeah. I was going to say it's been years. Nice. Um, so anyway, that's what I wanted to add to the agenda is definitely, um, so I think the sooner we start making noise to them about um, more than just where the town water line is, but what, you know, because that is their, um, that is their system, the um, stormwater runoff, it's not the town system. So I think we really need to press them to um, address the issues with that. Dune? Yeah. I think you could also put on your list that area in front of the library that's been a um, a catch basin for so many years. Mm -hmm. Yep. That is, um, I believe that is right at the corner of the park is where the, um, the confluence is. One system heads north and one heads south. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in the library now. That would probably require something coming in under the road to tie into what is headed. Or even up. building it up in front of that area so that yeah. it doesn't collect there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Dune. Yeah. There's, there's a catch basin right in front of the entrance to Pierce Hall. Mm -hmm. And that runoff from in front of the library comes and dumps into that uh, catch basin, then runs out behind Pierce Hall and over the bank. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So right. we get a lot of the runoff that actually comes from north of Pierce Hall. So that's where the um, proper um, curbing and sidewalk could really serve to direct the run into those catch basins instead of letting it puddle. But yeah. Okay, I'm making notes of all this stuff, dude. So, yeah. thank you, Bruce. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, so, since we just dumped a bunch of stuff on your lap, Joan, to research, you might as well go right into your updates. Okay. Um, let me just get the cat off my notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, let's see. It's going to be short. Um, I wanted to let you know that I recently learned um, this last week that we are able to draw down for partial reimbursement of uh, our FEMA work. It's there are a number of, we have like four, three or four different what FEMA calls projects. One of them is completed roads, fully completed roads. And that one is still being reviewed. It's being, it's under review by FEMA, the FEMA folks for, weeks, months, really. Um, and I'm not sure where that stands at this point. But meanwhile, we also have unfinished roads. 
and of the unfinished road project, we have probably completed somewhere close to 80% of that work now. Um, and they have all the paperwork uh, and backup documentation for work that was done on those road, that kind of um, subset of roads through the end of December. Um, and they have obligated those funds. Um, so we're able to uh, request reimbursement for 75% of what we've completed through the end of December. Um, and my conversations with a fellow at the state who's our sort of FEMA representative um, has said that um, his estimate of what that adds up to is somewhere in the neighborhood of $130,000. So he sent me all the paperwork so I can start filing for that reimbursement. I don't know how long it takes and I'm not sure how long it's gonna take me because um, it's, it's a whole lot of work. As you can imagine, these are you know federal forms that have to be filled out in triplicate. And a lot of it is information that's been long since submitted but it has to be resubmitted in a different format for this particular uh, process. So anyway, I am gonna to get to work on that so that we can at least see some of the money that FEMA owes us a little bit sooner than sometime in 2021. Um, so there's still hard to believe, but there's still a massive amount of paperwork that has to be done uh, for our full reimbursement. But I just want to let you know that I'm waiting my way through it. Um, and I'll be able to spend a little more time on it once the single audit is done, because a lot of that is, uh, is addressing FEMA costs as well and putting them into categories that the accountants can use as opposed to the way that FEMA wanted it um, submitted. So um, full employment for me for the next, who knows how many <laughs> months. Um, and then the last thing was just, I wanted to ask you if you had been able to give any thought to the additional paving that's going to be needed at the town garage once that uh, project gets underway, which will probably be, you know, maybe the first or second quarter of 2021. Um, if you remember last time, Cooter had around estimated 10, about $10,000. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, for, for that. And uh, I know I don't need an answer tonight, but it is something that I'd like to get um, back to uh, the White River Partnerships just so we know what the, the paving issue is going to look like and they can include it in the budget. And then obviously the town, you know, you <coughs> decide whether you can put it in the highway budget for the coming year. Yeah, which we have just started work on that. So um, um, bring it up on Wednesday. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and one other thing I just want to let you know about, if you remember the Better Roads application that we put in for Rogers Brook, which is uh, that caved in, caved in uh, culvert that's near the Bethel town line. And when the Bethel Mountain project was completed, uh, we were told by the folks at VTrans to go ahead and apply for that uh, culvert upsizing and replacement. Right. And um, our application wasn't approved. So um, I talked to the folks at Better Roads just to find out why, whether there was something wrong with the application. Or and it turns out that um, uh, ordinarily the Better Roads program gets up to $6 million a year to disperse to towns for projects like these. And this year, largely because of COVID and the delays associated with COVID, uh, COVID and the need to divert federal funds to COVID related things, they only had $300,000 to give out this year. And um, as a result, they decided not to give uh, grants to projects that were in excess of $20,000 because they wanted to try and spread what money they had out as far as possible with as many towns as they could. So otherwise, he said our, our application was fine and there's no reason why it wouldn't be approved. So I will be resubmitting it again in December. And so maybe um, next year um, we'll be able to replace that culvert. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, that's it, right? Yes, that's it. For now. Um, Tony, I see you joined us tonight. You got any reports from the, the literary world? Yes. Uh,
couple here. We will, the trustees will have a meeting tomorrow at 545 and it'll be on whatever this is called. We don't do Zoom, I think, but whatever. And it is accessible. Mm. Uh, we're still open by appointment to have people come in and browse uh, the bookshelves and uh, pick up on the porch is still going on. That seems to be doing pretty well. You can call or email uh, the library to get to get these things. Uh, we have some serious building problems that we need to get to, which means we us. <laughs> uh, we have a leak in the roof that's probably going to require a, a lift to get somebody up there. Fortunately, it appears to be one in one place, but it, uh, we're afraid that it will damage the upstairs ceiling if it uh, doesn't get fixed soon. So that has to be done. And there's some painting that needs to be done. The entire building needs to be painted. So that should be budgeted for along with uh, all of the downstairs windows uh, need some work on their sills. Some of them, some of the sills probably need to be replaced. Uh, so those are kind of pressing issues for right now. So we're kind of moving out of painting season. Um, and if yeah. you're going to get a lift, that would be the time to do both things at the same time. Is there any way someone can get up? to deal where is this leak around the chimney or where is it uh i think it's on the south side towards the back but i don't know why i'm saying that because i haven't seen it we have tried to get someone to go up there and uh so far all we can all we've been told is that we'll we'll need to get a lift uh, I'm telling you, I know ray harvey has had used a really big lift to help fix the uh the lights on the skating rink recently so he might be able i don't i don't know if he he could use it but he's got one right we're we're trying to we are asking some of those people just so okay. we can find a source mm -hmm. for one i mean that sounds like that probably be something that needs to be dealt with before winter i think so yeah, yeah. and of course the painting would be next summer next spring summer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah we got some issues with the town office there too. So I'm not sure we'll be able to do the whole building. And the town office also needs painting and plus the chimney's got to come down and yeah. be rebuilt. And that's going to be a, probably a, I'd say somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 grand yeah. to fix that. He said he might have to go through the roof on that one. So wow. um, we'll have to think hard about this. I think fixing the roof is important, though. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll have to go from there. All right. OK, thank you. Thank you. I know there are other places that need paint. The bandstand, too, is in bad shape. But... Yeah, we've got a lot. And everything requires somebody with workman's comp that works on municipal. So yeah, have to find people to do it. Yeah, right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, got um, well in terms of um, Terry's not here to talk about the utilities, but Julie, do you want to talk about the program? You got that application in time in for um, to help people that are having trouble with their water bills. Uh, yeah. So uh, as a town. Um, we are registered for anyone who is having trouble paying their utility bills between, I believe it's March 1st and December. Um, I've got to go over a lot of the paperwork has just been sent in today. So if anybody um, would like to call in or uh, we can start the process, I believe everything has to be done uh by December so 
it'll or the the program is extended through December fifteenth. So. Um, so Julie, I have a question. I, I, I you said the town is registered. Do you mm -hmm. mean it's registered for a, for a program to help people out that are having trouble? Uh, with those? Yeah, it's it's the Vermont. Um, COVID-19 Arrearage Assistance Program, VCAAP. Correct. Yeah. It's part of, it's a, it was established in July using an $8 million from the Federal CARES Act funding. And uh, they just opened it up to uh, municipalities and the uh, towns that have utility uh, services, water and sewer services to help uh, people who are um, having hardships due to income loss. Thank you. So, Thank you. So, so they extended that, Julie? They did. Okay. Do people have to apply for it? They will, yes. So there is an application. Um, I do have uh, paperwork coming in. Tomorrow I'm taking... Um, they're going to be speaking with a lot of the registered um, towns to give you an idea how to process all of that paperwork. Do we have a ton of delinquencies there? You know, I don't think we have a ton, um, but that's a that's a good question. I've I've got to um, research that tomorrow. And this is for this would have to be uh, more than sixty days overdue. So correct. just a, not just a. No, that's correct. Yeah. So anyway, this um, program was out there. Um, and it really um, got dropped in our laps at the last minute. So thanks, Julie, for jumping on that. And, um, if somebody could take advantage of that. Correct. Yeah. So Julie, if anybody wants more information about that, it's okay to call you at the town office? Yeah, please do. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so um, on to new business. Um, uh, do anything about roads, Dune? No, no roads? Road. Um, no, they're all, they're all there. Okay, they're working. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, I um, Well, the leaves off the park today. I was gonna say the road yeah. crew was, was clean up the park. Yep, no, just um, enjoying a little, um, um, another warm week you know, in anticipation of changes to come. Yeah. I've, um, I got a call into uh, Laws Ag there so we can uh, put lime and fertilizer on it this fall. They should the be, uh, he didn't, he was uh, out, he was busy today and he didn't get back to me, but I'll give him a call tomorrow. It's, it's going to be uh, about a thousand bucks to have it done uh, for what we need. With the soil test that I had this spring, He'll be putting on a, see, two ton of lime and I don't know, 70 odd bags. It was, the material was like $750 and the, the application fee was 250. So, yeah, so I'll be doing that. That'll be, do, be done sometime this week or next. I don't know when. It's about time, I guess it's been a while since we've but Thank you, Frank. Into that. Yeah. It's yeah. There are parts of it that are really kind of bearish. Yeah, he, he won't have as easy a time around the trees, but you know, I figure if we do anything is better than nothing. So right. Exactly. We'll, we'll, do the, we'll see what happens with it. Thank you. Go from there. All right. So on to um new business. Let's talk a little bit about the um the future of the high school building. So, um, Pat, you've been working um, with the school board a little bit about their anxiousness for us to um, to make a decision. Yes, and uh, I have the the school board has been uh, had a few changes along the way and an election. So um, now I think we're 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 stabilized into who's doing what on the school board. They have designated a point person for me to communicate back and forth, forth with, um, and that's Amy Wilt. Um, so they actually are starting a meeting at 6.30 tonight, 
and I would like to join into that meeting and um, with this with this 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 new revitalized uh, school board that we have here and um, I I know that they're going to be asking us um, for some type of information or commitment uh, towards the high school building. Um, and so now that we know what we're dealing with, with for a school board, um, I would be ready to present them with uh, a statement of, um, we do have a commitment towards uh, obtaining the high school building. Um, I do think that we should mention um, that our interest is tied to the continuation of the merger. Um, and um, if we, you know, if we think that there's going to be a uh, unmerging of the school systems that does, does tell us that, you know, going through all of the red tape it takes to separate this property, um, we, we would want to all be going in the same direction and not go in this direction and then find out that they've changed their mind. So um, I think it's time for us to make uh, that statement to them. They're looking for that statement from us. Um, but in exchange, um, I would like to have a statement from the school board about their commitment towards the future of the school district. Does anybody have any thoughts to throw in there for me? Or be not? <laughs> I'm back to my old feeling on that. I, I think we're repurposing the wrong building. And that's where I stand on it. Well, when we, when we did vote for the merger, we've, the, the merger was designed towards the high school building. So I, I kind of think that if we were to change buildings, we would need to amend the merger document on what was voted on by the school, by, by all the voters. Um, I hear you. I hear you. Um, right. Everybody's got concerns like, you know, what, what should we do? Which one is best? And they're almost a toss up um, for uh, value and economics, um, you know, longevity, usability. Yeah, there's all these categories. And um, many of us has been through both buildings and um, mm. you know, pros and cons for both one. Um, but it was decided when we voted on the merger that it would be the high school building. Uh, what it would take to change that, I'm not sure. That it would be the high school building that was given up. Right. Yeah. yeah. The only, the, the weirdest thing about the two buildings is that each one of them has something that's important. Like the high school building has an auditorium, which is used by the public, et cetera. And the elementary school has the cafeteria and gym and stuff. So, you know. Each, each of them has something that it's too bad they weren't all in one building, you know, that kind of thing. I have a question for you, Patty, this is Catherine. Um, okay. How are you doing? Um, th thanks for the work you're doing on this project. Um, if, I would like to know how, if the school district, i.e., I guess, especially if the Stockbridge really goes towards the um, undoing of the merger, how would that affect us in terms of acquiring a building? Would we then just be acquiring two buildings? I would assume that if we unmerged, everything that we had voted on during the merger would dissolve. So then there would, we would get back the entire campus, elementary and high school, if, if it was decided, if the state approved it. And I believe that the voters have to vote on it as well. I believe it has to be voted on as well. So, you know, there's a lot of ifs there um, about whether or not this, uh, an unmerger, it, it's an easy word to say, but not an easy thing to do. So um, there would be a lot of hurdles to do that. I'm not saying it's not doable, um, but he, I would assume that everything goes back to the way it was. But, but we don't need a vote on repurposing the building, I understand, from an earlier meeting. Correct. 
Um, it's already been, when we voted for the merger, we voted for all of the particulars that were part of that merger and disposing of the high school building was part of the language of the merger. So. Uh, I just, so I last, oh, okay. Uh, Rob? So I understand that you don't need any town vote then to make this deal. Nope, what I'm told by lawyers is that we already voted on it. It was in the merger and we already voted for it. So one of the things in um, the, uh, the report, the building assessment report was, uh, was some figures associated with um, converting the high school building into an elementary school, which has a significant cost to it. But if we, for an, if the merger uh, unmerged and we became in possession of both buildings and at some point the town decided that we wanted to make the high school building the elementary school building, it would seem that that's something that could be done with the idea that the funds for uh, turning that into a, uh, turning the high school building into an elementary school building would have to you know, go, go towards that end. I think that anything that has been discussed in terms of plans for the repurposing of the building to date, uh, you know, which is still in the, much, much in the planning stages, uh, I don't see that there would be down the road a big, a, a significant problem if, you know, there, if the town were to decide that they needed more space for the elementary school. I mean, I don't see that as some sort of hurdle at this point that is insurmountable in the future, but I don't see how we can do it now. Well, the, if there were an unmerger, uh, there'd be involvement of the state education system, um, you know, and they would step in and um, our per pupil cost um, would go up significantly. Um, so it's a little bit more than just what would we do with the space we have at that point with an unmerger. There, there would be a lot of decisions to be made um, considering our tax rate. Um, and, and what would the state do with us? And so that is, that is a whole different conversation that I don't, I, you know, I would need to be facing that. Yeah. In order Lots to get unknowns. those are unknowns. Um, yeah. uh, we'd be, we'd be lucky to survive as a school. I think if, if, uh, the merger doesn't work, I think it cost wise, it'd be just too expensive. Both. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, just, just, throw, just to throw numbers out there, I think uh, rough numbers were currently at 17,000 per student. And if we were to unmerge and went on our own, we would be at $21,000 per student. Right. Um, that would would make everyone's taxes go up two to $4,000 um, a year. Excuse me, Pat, I had heard that we had um, a, a, a rise in um, the student numbers at the elementary this year. Is that true, or do you know that? It was uh, it was presented to me that there were new people that had moved into town, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, there are there are more new pupils in Rochester uh, than there are in Stockbridge, um, but the, it, I'm not saying that we've got a thirty percent rise in. Okay, in, no, I just wonder. We have a few more kids. <laughs> okay, Robert, you had something you wanted to say. Yeah, both both principals said to me in the course of the various business uh, uh, building meetings uh, that the they didn't think, as I understood it, that the schools were sustainable unless they were merged, and that means that all this push from Stockbridge to break up the merger, which I, and I don't know whether that's coming from five pissed off people or or all of Stock, I don't know, but that's a very heavy decision because of this, a very serious decision, and at some point I think. Uh, we, we need to publicly start examining if that becomes a movement, what that means. The second thing, I may, just as an observation, there's a lot of money involved in this. There's a lot of money that to maintain the building. There's a lot of money to fix it. Can we really do that without putting it out to a vote? And I, I'm not, I'm, I, this is a question, not a, you know, I'm not arguing. I, I feel the same way about that, Robert. I, I'm a little apprehensive and maybe, as the paper says, maybe we've done it already, but I'd 
I don't know. I would think we would take a lot of flack from the community if we just went ahead with something like that. I, I don't know. My sense of this is that we're dealing with a, a tremendously complicated issue here. It's really complicated <laughs> on a bunch yeah. of issues. Yeah. And that the Stockbridge people really would just wish this was easy and it was over like that. Yeah. It's not easy. And, and um, so I, I guess Patty's going to be on the spot in there and the people, a lot of people are going to want her to say, yeah, no problem. I'll sign a check tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's just very, very complicated. And, and, um, I, and I, I guess I would say, I, I really think we should very cautiously step forward into this. Uh, right, the point about putting the elementary school in there in the future or something else happening in the future. That's a very big point, but there's a bunch of those kind of things in here. So yeah. I just say that we should step slowly. That's all. I, I agree with this, not trying to move too fast because it is, is complicated. I mean, there is um, the, um, you know, the town could own that building and lease it out, but uh, that we can't as a primary pur purpose being a landlord, we're not allowed to do that. That building would have to have some municipal purpose and we could still lease out um, aspects of it, but it's, um, we're not just looking at buying this building to, to um, just for the sake of having a building. So one thing I think it would be um, worth asking the school board tonight or then the next meeting is there are um you know vic and, and catherine and i've been involved with the the envision project about um trying to come up okay who would want to use that what what could happen in that building and would the school board be willing to lease that building out as it as the situation is now for for someone that does want to start something and then it could start the ball rolling in terms of down the line a little bit and it can show to the town of rochester okay we we could take this on in the interest of having um control and making sure that good things happen to the community for the community for that building but uh, but kind of spark the fire and, and maybe stockbridge could get things going a little bit and then offset some of the expense that their um, the school board is, is worried about with the building as um so, so i'm just wondering why the school board would be in any better position to be a landlord than the town i mean i, I don't really understand why one entity is better off as a landlord as you call it than the other when we have definitely said that it's our intention to retain the campus as our asset and and we would be the town most directly benefited by it and what we're hoping in the planning stages that would stimulate economic development in this town i, I think dun was talking about in the short term I and mean, right yeah. the fact is that school board owns the building right now so they would be the de facto landlord in the short right term. R they do right now that's yeah. right yeah and they but have they i would have like to see a little time. more of a merger I would like to see a little more of a merger than a loveless marriage that we're in right now. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Oh, no. <laughs> They're wondering where the romance went, Frank. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're operating two different buildings and it's it's not saving us money. No, it's not. You know, I, I mean, and we've got three buildings that we're dealing with as a school system. And so I, I just think it's crazy. And if we don't start using things a little differently, then I don't think the merger is worth a merger. I wish there was some way to, to keep the auditorium. I mean, that's something that has been for town meetings and the players put a lot of money into that rate fundraised a lot after Irene to fix it up and always used it. And, you know, the, the kids used it for school and it's too bad it's in a separate building, you know. Oh, yeah, well, I, I don't think there's any question that the, the town you know whether we want to have a say into the future use of that building that it benefits the the building i don't think we want to just you know have a, a someone in there and start manufacturing tires just for the sake <laughs> of having more jobs in town you know it, it has a um you know i'm I, i'm optimistic that it it will eventually come to you know be another one of the shining lights of rochester but it's right now the um the power is turned off and that's not shining too bright yeah mm -hmm. so. 
there, there are those that have said that, you know, well, if Rochester doesn't start showing interest in the building, we'll just, they'll just put it on the market to, to sell it outright as a commercial building. Oh, right. um, so yeah, they're, they're kind of, they're kind of pushing for uh, something from us. And I think that I, I would like to ask for a commitment from them um, at the same time that we make a commitment uh, uh, about acquiring the building. Um, like I said, uh, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't seem to be worth the while to go through the time expense and lawyers and surveyors and all of that um, only to end up with them uh, wanting to unmerge with us. And uh, then we'd have these two properties that we'd have to eventually probably merge back into one. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I'm just, I, I would like to, to go before the school board this evening and, and say, you know, with the new school board that's in place now, uh, do, do they have a commitment to continue with the merger? <coughs> does that sound like it's I think that's a very good uh, question to present to them with the idea that the town is interested. And um, do you know what time we're scheduled to be on their agenda tonight? Um, well, their meeting started at 630, but they have a bunch of stuff to go through first. They know I'm coming in later. OK. I think there's a, there's a big political problem here. Uh, which is right in the middle of all of this. That is, a, there, there's, a, there's a very vocal, hostile bunch of, or I don't know how many, four people, 10 people, a thousand, I don't know. But they're very hostile about the merger and they're hostile about Rochester. And they're very uh, anxious to get the high school off of the ticket. They just don't want to pay for it. That's impeding a lot of the process of, of the, of that we're talking about it, not to mention the school board thing. I don't know how you deal with that except somebody, the school board or the town, somebody should start making a public statements about the importance of the merger in terms of success of education, which is true. The principals think it's working, the value to the towns, all this kind of stuff. All we're really hearing about is, these, is this, what I think is a relatively small number of really pissed off loud people. Well, I, right, that, uh, could the whole, really, that could be the whole uh, uh, population of Stockbridge too. But one I, really good thing that happened, Rob, is that the new, the new person who got voted onto the school board, Justine um, Kellen Kavakis, grew up in Rochester, graduated from Rochester High School, and has a lot of connections to Rochester. And I feel that she was, is a person who would work very hard to keep things going well between the two towns. Yeah, she, she's great, opinion. but the, there's already a lot of hostile feedback. Oh, on I know, but I mean, she's her, a good addition to the board. They see her as the Rochester mentoring candidate or something. Oh. But in any event, you know, it's going to be really difficult to, to be effective and successful in this very complicated, difficult problem if we can't kind of get everything on an even keel. Mm -hmm. If they want to blow off the merger, which is what the same people who hate the high school want to blow off the merger. Well, I believe that... Uh, Joe Biden's got an even bigger problem than we have right now. And I have faith that things can go forward and that there can be a new spirit of unity in general. I'm, and I, I'm going to work towards that. <laughs> but I, th I think there, that needs to be somebody's agenda. That needs to be a job. Mm -hmm. How can we stop, stop the hostility, make the merger work for the sake of the towns and the kids? I mean, somebody needs to step forward and start doing stuff publicly, politically, to make that happen, I think. Otherwise, we're, we're seeding the the um, loudspeaker to the to the people that are causing a problem i think yeah Doesn't the school board play a big role in this like the primary role of course but but in a, in a communication sense i think they've been pretty passive well i think we haven't been we're all volunteers and and it all comes down to how our time is uh, scheduled and i think that rob makes a really good point and that maybe there should be a regular communication thing that emphasizes the positives of the merger, the assets to, you know, if the repurposing of the high school, how that could benefit the region, not just the, the town of Rochester. Yeah, I think there's a lot of PR to go forward. I agree with you, Rob, and that definitely should happen. But somebody's got to do it. Some, I mean, they got some, and may, maybe uh, some presentation to the board should be, we really need to work together, some kind of, to say, yeah, our, our, in a good faith sense, our intent is to take over this high school, but it's very complicated, and we we want we need to know that the merger is going to hold, and we want to. Maybe you should put together a committee of people with this, you know, to 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 publicly start to 
talk <coughs> how to talk about the positives of the merger because all we've heard is the merger is a disaster and it is not if you talk to the principals not only is it is it good for the kids it's good financially i mean that's what the principals say at least that's what they say to me so but i don't think that that word is getting out and i think it should another thing that bothers me a little bit with all this too is uh you know do we need another town building we've got the library which we can't find anybody to paint we got a hole in the roof we got a an old town office that's going to require a lot of work and maintenance down the road that's going to cost us community money we've got a town garage that's kind of almost lived up to its full potential and we've got an old firehouse sitting there that's going to crumble one of these days because it's just made out of block well, and there's so there's a high school how, much, building. how many more buildings do we want to have that we can't afford to maintain the high school building is a lot of square footage what's the possibility of you you know utilizing we're going to have to sell a bunch of stuff to get rid of it but i'm the just saying and the, what about the, the town the, office and the town office to go down there yeah that's true uh, get rid of that whole thing and put the library down there too and get rid of that we the library the room. library the library is a a little jewel <laughs> and and very and something the town really loves i think we can find i, I understand that catherine i'm just being facetious when i said that <laughs> i know, I know. Well, well we don't want the high school building to turn into the warehouse building up in hancock right no we don't no i i agree 100 percent I think the town office idea is actually a pretty good one, but you know, I wouldn't want to move the library. I think she's right about it. But imagine Nancy at the budget meeting, somebody saying, oh, how about this? How about we pay $40,000 a year in the maintenance of this building with our taxes? I mean, it's just that, not fixing it. We know. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. So what would be the reaction in the, in the budget meeting or, the, or anybody responsible about the realistic cost of these things? It's very complicated. It's a very- it goes, beyond the, it goes beyond the budget meeting. It actually goes to town meeting where there would be discussion and you'd quickly understand yeah. where people yeah. are. Yeah. It probably needs to go to town meeting to be yeah. discussed. Sure. I'm sure it will be discussed. Though, I mean, if, if the town, office was moved to the school there's a building that the town could divest itself of using some of the revenue for that to back down at the high school mm -hmm. um, i don't know anything really about the size of the lot where the old fire department is but it minimal well, pretty minimal yeah. Yeah. yeah i think uh a hood sparling might be interested in that space that old that old firehouse lot goes right over through almost to the credit union i think very close yeah it's uh the credit union parking lot i think is is firehouse property hmm. i think the it's firehouse simple. could be on the credit union property i was gonna say maybe the credit union would like to improve well, simpson's, simpson's building is right <laughs> their lot is right on the building line i think <laughs> if i remember right so, what are you going to tell them, Pat? <laughs> <laughs> I do, but so I've got back up to my my request to the school board about um, their their commitment towards the merger. Um, I I think that there's a lot of people tonight that that support that idea, and and that's really just a common sense. A uh, statement. Um, you know, are, are we all doing this going in the same? Be pulling apart anyway. Um, so um, I do have a, a little something that I had prepared going going in this direction. So I'm really just going to make a, a little statement, and I, I'm not going to open the floor to a lot of if ands and buts that don't need to come up tonight. Just need to come up further down. But I do want to start the conversation, and I want to start it with a commitment. Um, are, are are they with us? I think that's an excellent idea, Patty. A really good idea. I think it'll cause some steam there, you know. Uh, but I think it's a, a great way to kind of put it back in their court uh, mm -hmm. and and try to get people to get, to get their head screwed on right. Uh, that's a good idea. Okay, so I'm I if my uh, brothers in select uh, agree. Um, I'm okay with that, Pat. Yeah. 
we got yeah. we got to move forward somehow, but um, I want to move cautiously. Mm -hmm. So am I correct that, that what you're going to tell them is that the select board agree that they're in favor of um, uh, making a commitment to take over the building? I wouldn't say that yet. I wouldn't say that yet. I well, she, she, she didn't put a date. date. She said that the town is interested in acquiring the building uh, and would make a commitment, but she also, but the town also is needing a commitment from the school board towards the sustaining of the merger. Right, right. And I think that's a really good statement. It gives them hope, but it also lets them know they have some responsibility. Okay, so if I said that the select board is in favor of the town taking over the building in the future at some point, but they would like the uh, commitment from the RSUD board that they're uh, committed to maintaining the merger. I wonder if you should wait till uh, Patty yeah. makes the presentation before you put it in the paper. <laughs> yeah. gonna, gonna do I, I wouldn't even mention it myself yet. <laughs> well, it's, it's, all, it's all something that happened at this meeting. I'm supposed to be reporting on what you happened, but I don't well, know. She's going to she's going to participate in the uh, in the uh, school board meeting tonight regarding the future of the high school building. So, Patty, if something interesting happens that you feel is important, you could email me and let me know because my deadline isn't until tomorrow afternoon late. Something interesting always happens. <laughs> That's right. Okay, fine. You know what I mean. <laughs> I, I think that you would you would phrase it. Um, I would be cautious of saying that we're we're you know. We want to buy the building, but I say it's safe to say that we we want to have a say in its future use. Mm -hmm. and that's that not is, good enough. <laughs> How about if I said enough. you're interested in 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 um, taking over the building or in the idea of taking over the building? You haven't made a commitment, but you're interested in it. Well, it's it's um. You, I don't think we want to um, put words out there that, that okay. communicate uh, our commitment. To do that, we there is a definite interest in that, and the interest in you know in what happens with that building that will be of a the ultimate benefit to the town. And if that is the form that 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 unfolds is through the town ownership of that building, then that that will become apparent. But it's not. I don't think we can say that. Okay, you're interested in the future, having a say in the future of the building. How's that? But at the same time, you don't want to get them looking for commercial, other commercial interests in that building. Right, right. I mean, there, not just there, a benefit to the town, but a benefit to the region, you know? Yeah. To, yeah. to, to the Quintown area, don't exclude benefit to Stockbridge by whatever the repurposing of this building could be. But they, they don't have a right to do that until the five year merger period is done. Right. Two town has the right of first refusal for the next couple of years. Right. Yeah. I wouldn't worry about that right now. I think Jim's point is, is very well taken. I, I think the word commitment should never be used, but but a good good faith interest or or a good faith good faith interest that's good. You know, but, but, but you know, com, uh, dependent on some kind of statement of commitment from them mm -hmm. about, uh, about what's going to happen to the merger. Right. I think it's good right. and vague right. enough. It, it's vague enough, but it's it's. Uh, a lot of people won't like it, but I think that's I think Doom's right. You know, but eventually they'll have to negotiation. So the these kind of this kind of language right now is kind of important. So uh, I think Doom's right. Um, I mean, it's really a lot does hinge on their intention whether or not to continue with the merger because that does really throw the whole different different ball at us if that if that happens so it's almost um this whole concept of the five year <laughs> cooling off period to really let things settle down was was a wise idea and, and I, I don't know you know it's important that we're talking about this now because you know we're halfway through those five years now but um i don't think that um we need to quite jump just yet you know. and it does seem that there are just a few people in Stockbridge that are really pushing this diverging. Um, and we don't know whether the entire town is willing to, to upset the merger. May, may I ask a question? Um, Pat, what if they say, well, what's the holdup? Why, why don't you take it now or within the next six months? How would, how would you respond to that? 
Oh, I would just say it's very complicated. It's very complicated. Yeah, yeah. I'm just very anticipating questions that likely to come. <laughs> um, I, I see going up somewhere. I, I would basically say that the ball is court about the subdividing of the property. And um, uh, there, was a, there was a list of things that needed to be done, you know, prior to us acquiring the building. It has to be subject. Um, have they, I think they may have had a survey there, but my response would be, uh, what have you done towards this goal as well? Because you're the one to get the ball going first. Mm -hmm. And you know, they're, they're the step where the, where the, so they have to prepare property to be sold to us. And so if they've got, if they've done all of their homework, subdividing and um, all of that, we want to see what those, we want to see the new surveys. Mm -hmm. Is How is that probably not going to work? Um, so the ball, I would respond by saying the ball has been in your court many months, mm. a lot of months. Um, but we understand that you know, COVID threw a monkey wrench into what you needed to concentrate yeah. your effort and maybe we've got, you know, stabilization and kids back in school. And can we get back to this? Because you're the ones that are pressing to get it done. So mm -hmm. we're ready whenever you are. What have you done? That's what I would say. Would you, if I may follow up, would you want to say anything about um, we're working on developing financially feasible plans for the building? I mean, that to me is sort of the acid test, if we can take this on or not, is can we come up with a financially feasible way of doing it? Kind of to Rob's point. Obviously, everyone knows that we have formed a committee to explore options for the high school and are asking if the school board, and, and we could, if the school board would consider leasing the building to the town so that we can pursue entities that could benefit from this space. This would take um, our task to the next level. I don't, I don't think we're asking them to lease it to the town. We're asking if they're interested in, if they, if there is an entity that that wants to jumpstart um, a project in there, would they be willing to lease it yeah. while they're waiting to sell it to the town eventually? Yeah. I, mean, you know, to, I don't think we're asking to, to lease it. The town's not asking to lease it from the school board right now. Right. That's good. Because we you. don't have a project for it, you know, but it's it's hopefully hopefully that other and then the one thing to keep in mind is that. We don't have any money for it either. No, we don't. Well, a dollar, but no, that's not fair. <laughs> no, a dollar, I, have, that's I have to say, we all know about the $40,000 uh, uh, cost of sense. keeping the building uh, open. And, and that's minimal. That's minimally. That's, that's mothball. That's not keeping it open to the level that will be housing people doing things. You know. And we're going to need to have a, a new town employee as a janitor to take care of this building. Um, you know, well, we, we do have some models from from uh, some of the other maker spaces we've explored. And what we've been hoping is that we create a revenue model and have this entity that is yet to be named that would help in the administration of the use of the building. You know, to me, as I listen to all this, it's in the interest of not only the town of Rochester, as well as the school board, as in addition to any potential users, I see a tri partnership in some sort of exploratory use of the space in which everyone will benefit by investing some aspect in whatever this new entity is going to be. Because of the school board wants to transition the town really wants to acquire the property, but they, they don't want the risk, right? They don't want the financial risk. So they're being, they're hedging and they're gonna maybe run down the clock for two years. I don't know what the select board's thinking in terms of ultimately acquiring, but I would imagine that thought is at least past Frank's mind. And so um, I'm saying that there's an interest in, in potentially three different entities in having that building used and maybe we could even create some sort of contract in which there would be a partial investment from three different entities with revenues coming in being from the third part, the users of the building as a possibility, just to even explore what we can do. Let me, let me be grim for a minute. The town can't afford that building. The town can't afford that building. The only way they can afford that building 
is that some creative work is done on designing fundraising and usage that has income and all this kind of business. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of work and it's very complicated. But my feeling is right now today, we can't afford that building, yeah, right. all that goes with it. And, and right. we should recognize that and, and the hazards in that, recognizing that everyone wants that building and that it's an important building to the town for symbolic reasons, for functional reasons, but, but right now we can't afford that building. And we shouldn't be rushing into anything, nor should we be promising anybody anything. I don't yeah. think anybody's rushing into anything, Rob. I'm just, but, just but everybody's agreed that they don't want the building empty either. They don't want it to be another warehouser. And so I think, you know, the school wouldn't want the building to be run down. The town doesn't want the building to go out of their control. And whoever is the entity that is now going through the explorations, there's multiple committees at work right now. It's not just one committee to uh, repurpose that building. They all have a stake in the future of that building. And it, it could potentially be a benefit to the entire region at some point. You have to just invest and explore and look towards an outcome or a goal. Yeah, but there, it's like, you know, there's a bridge between what we could do right now and the potential. There's a, 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 right now, there's a gap there. And, and there's gap, only one way to cross a bridge, and that's one foot at a time. Yeah, sure. That's, I'm that's just saying, all I'm saying steps. Yeah. is that the, yeah. the, the people of the town, we can't afford this building. And, mm -hmm. and so... I, and I'm not hearing that, except maybe from Frank. Uh, I think there needs to be uh, some kind of foundational understanding of that. And that means that defines the job that must be done and the care we must take, the combination of caution and action that should be expressed here, which is complicated. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I agree. I agree. It's um, do we, can we move on to the next uh, part of the agenda? Or do, do you need <laughs> yeah, I think we... Um, we beat this no, horse to no. death on both of them. No, no, there's not really a lot I can say except for a lengthy and complicated conversation about the subject in, in um, and that, um, that, I've, I got I got my question answered, and I I think I can take this in just a very small paragraph, um, but a large statement in a small paragraph. Yeah. The, yeah. I'm going to reach out to the town of Bridgewater, which had a much smaller school but they had the same deal and they have um took possession of, of one of the school buildings and they've um i think they're leasing it they to a non-profit organization that they've got a daycare going on there they've got so i'm, I'm just going to reach out to them and see exactly what what transpired there and what you know what what they found worked and didn't, didn't work for them what did what did plymouth ever do with their school too they closed their doors no no some years ago um i don't they had a little building there pretty good size building actually right there in, in plymouth so anyway um yes martha um then let's um talk about the town meeting because this might be a, a a dynamic conversation at the town meeting on the same high school building topic but <laughs> Um, how are we going to run the town meeting this year? Um, sounds like it's. Um, Will we not, be able to have it there if, if, in the auditorium? Well, no, uh, we're looking at the. Um, we can make most of our um, or, or all of our decisions with Australian ballot. We can okay. turn this into, you know. That requires that, a vote from us, right? The, the legislative so. body. Yeah. So, so is this because due to COVID, you're considering doing it all mostly Australian ballot, or um, is that? Do we have the option? There's the state guidelines are coming down to that yeah, effect. Yeah, they're they're coming down to that effect, and there are certain procedures we would need to take to to vote. To and I think the town has to vote on whether or not to make all the decisions Australian ballot. Right. And, yeah. We have to have a meeting ahead of time, well ahead of time. Well, to... well, uh, I thought I read that. The leg because of COVID, the legislative body can elect to do that for 2021. So I I take that as that's the select board. Is that am I correct on that? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So yes. we could we could vote to have Australian ballot for this year, right? For so this coming can, year, and then correct? I think they're going to extend that through to 2021. Well, which will be the meeting will be in 2021. Then the, the issue is how do we present 
what's being voted on in, in a clear and in a, a way we're going to have to I mean, the town report has all the information in it, but I don't think it's as easily um, presented as you do in the unfolding of a town meeting. So we have to really give a lot of thought into that town report as to being a, um, a real um, explanation and, and um, telling the story of what these decisions are, not, not just a, an accumulation of numbers and facts. To, to um, Dune, is it possible that in addition to the written town report that gets mailed out, you had some sort of live stream or Zoom presentation by the board or something? I know you couldn't get as many people on that wanted to talk probably, but maybe somebody from you each. Try. <laughs> I, I don't know. And then what, people. What I was thinking we might be able to do was uh, we could have the the officers of the community and, and people on the budget and finance, a few of them, a spokesperson for them maybe, um, and the heads of all the departments that we have. And we could do a, a Zoom meeting with everybody involved there and have a, a call-in session for the community where they could call in and ask a question and then they could get an answer that way possibly. I've been on I've been on Zoom meetings with uh, several hundred people from around the world all at the same time. Uh -huh. What is our general turnout on a town meeting? At 120. Oh, we could easily do 120. I mean, I think that we could do it. We could do a town meeting by Zoom, and then well, the other thing that answer. There's but, another uh, thing too that a lot of the software, and I'm not sure if Zoom allows it, but other meeting software I've been involved with, you can actually put a question to the audience. They vote, it tabulates the whole thing. Um, you know, just is done very, very quickly. Um, so I'm not, I'm not totally convinced that you'd have to do everything by Australian ballot. Um, if but you, there's also people who don't have a computer process. or don't have the, 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 you know, a computer or something to, to, to do Zoom or but whatever. You can but there's call a in on the phone though. Excuse me. You can call in. Yeah. Oh, okay. He is yeah. providing a lot of information, um, and Julie will be getting. She's already received some of it, and there'll be a lot more, which we have to be paying paying attention to. Uh, David asked a question uh, about uh, electing the officials. Um, I'm an incumbent, so obviously I'd be on the ballot, but if somebody was going to run against me, usually they stand up at town meeting and that's when you know they're running. Um, they might might not be able to do it that way. All right. <laughs> You're a shoe in Patty. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that that's not that not that's not my point because we we for you know the town clerk and listers and and, and things down the way. And sometimes there are other people that want to step up to the plate and run against somebody. And then there's other times when there's nobody wants to fill the spot. So we actually call out there and beg for somebody to take the spot. So um, I just, that was my, that was David's question. And I didn't really have an answer for how that was going to work. There is something coming down from um, VLCT on a remote public meeting and they'll be providing a toolkit. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen it yet. We haven't seen the toolkit yet. <laughs> no, okay. So I think there's a lot of information that will be coming out within the next uh, couple of weeks um, because we're, we have an early town meeting this year, March 1, and we have to comply with all of the state laws on uh, posting yeah. meetings and giving everybody time to send yep. in what they want. So yeah, we're not gonna figure it out tonight, so it's to be continued, but um, it should be, <clears throat> I'm sure we'll talk about the high school building some though. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure that's gonna come up. It'll definitely yeah. be on the agenda. Yeah, yeah. So well, thank um, you guys. Yeah, well, thank you all. Um, it's um, teamwork, right? Does anyone have anything else they'd like to speak about before we um, sign off here and let Patty go to the school board meeting? I know you're excited.
<laughs> rare, rare to go. <laughs> I'm Thank monitoring you, the school Patty. on my, on my Thanks again, Patty. I'm not quite there yet. Yeah. Thank you, Patty. Yeah. Anybody Thanks, want to Pat. change? You can't do that. I'm going to be there to support you. you <laughs> I too. Just... <laughs> all right, then I, I guess we're um, then we're done. Thank you all for coming out, and um, we'll see you in the funny pages. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Night off. Nice. 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 Nice.